Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this webinar, which is the number four integration. And now we are starting this specialized one. Today is programmatic automation. So Ian will explain you more in depth how to use the PIN portal REST API, our PIN engine and PIN scheduler, our system database, libra librarian, and bartender XML. Today, we're looking at automating Bartender programmatically. So we're wanting a more tight and more bespoke integration with Bartender. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn my camera off and we'll get started first with presentation and then we go hands-on with the software. Today is programmatic automation. Uh, where we're having a detailed look at Bartender's various APIs how you can use them because you can implement them in di various different ways, all in the purpose of controlling and automating bartenders' processes for printing, for previewing, and much else besides. In terms of the agenda, uh, as I mentioned, we'll first look at a PowerPoint presentation, uh, going over some general concepts and a tour through the uh, various APIs available to us. And then we'll go hands-on with the software. Uh, so first looking at key points in the document design as to how you would set up that document uh, for how you would then use it in an automated fashion to set variable data on that label. Uh, first looking at BTXML, which is bartender's uh, flavor or schema of XML, how that can be used, what it offers. Then onto the .NET SDK, which I guess is the, the main meat of uh, Bartender's current integration capability. And then we'll take a look at the Print Portal REST API. Uh, this is the newest, uh, most recent addition to our various APIs available in Bartender. And it's exposed by the Print Portal web application, uh, making Bartender essentially uh, available through a web API. So this is all about control of Bartender using its various APIs for automated printing, previewing, document management, and reporting. So, programmatic control. Basically, Bartender is an ideal solution for the design and printing of barcode and RFID labels, which in turn can be part of an automated process uh, and can also be with the aid of the integration platform. However, sometimes the automation of Bartender needs to be more nuanced, more bespoke or tighter than what the native actions that we provide in Bartender support. And therefore, to this end, Bartender offers a series of APIs that allow for more precise, uh, more interactive programmatic control of the software. Uh, as previously noted, this includes BTXML. The .NET SDK, and I'll explain what I mean and what the difference is between the SDK and an API. Uh, print Portal, the REST API, and various legacy options that you may still wish to make use of. In terms of document design, of course, you guys are probably already very familiar with this. Uh, you can use the Bartender Designer to design your document uh, with the text, barcodes, RFID tags, pictures, uh, lines and shapes as you wish. And of course, some of that uh, or some of those document objects would be making use of variable data sources, data sources that you would want to set at time of print. Now, obviously, if you're automating 
the the control of Bartender. Uh, the main reason for that is for printing, and of course you would want to set the variable data in that document prior to printing. Uh, whether it's setting uh, simple named data sources with a value, or overriding uh, data uh, file um, connections, be that CSV, XML, JSON, IDOC files uh, for record-based data sets. Of course, if the document is connected to a fixed database, then you can provide query criteria data at time of print in order to find or, or return those records of data that you're wishing to print. So it's important that you design your document with automation in mind. And this is very much the same as it was the case with the integration platform. The main difference, of course, between integration platform and using the APIs is that with integration platform, you can rapidly and easily create your integrations, your automated processes using the integration builder. With the APIs, you're essentially doing the same thing, uh, but programmatically. Uh, so the precise behavior and functionality that you want is as you precisely program it. Uh, so sometimes it may be the case you want to use the API rather than the built-in tools of the integration platform. Okay, what is this session about and what is it not about? Well, due to the amount of information, because this is a very broad topic really, uh, we would not be able to cover too much in depth. and uh, Therefore, there's a necessity uh, for you guys to be already familiar with programming languages. So this webinar is, is not teaching you how to code, but it's an introduction as to what is available within the Bartender software. Uh, so my intention here is to bring awareness on what's possible in the various APIs and how they could be implemented uh, to act as an introduction, of course, to those APIs and the technologies involved. Uh, essentially how to automate Bartender from an external software or system, but it's not about uh, using Visual Basic scripting inside a document. And just to underline, this is not a session, a session to teach you how to code. Although, of course, we will be looking at some code during uh, this, this webinar. Uh, so first, let's take a look at BTXML. And BTXML is the native XML schema of Bartender. Uh, so yes, BTXML is the native schema of Bartender, and it's used for transferring commands and data for execution by the Bartender print engine. Uh, specific actions are currently supported such as to produce a print job or to generate a print preview. Now, of course, the use of BTXML uh, script is ideal for use with web applications and modern business systems uh, that communicate to Bartender through the use of web services. However, Bartender XML script can be also executed directly through the various APIs. Uh, so this includes the, the print engine uh, .NET API, uh, also the BTXML action, which is part of the print scheduler API, again of the .NET SDK. And we can also run it as an action in the integration platform. And we'll be taking a look at each of those uh, when we go hands-on with the software. So in terms of the key actions of BTXML, uh, the most obvious one is to make a print request. And as you see there in the subject line, it's 
because it's often used as part of web services, a request is made, but also a response, a reply is expected. Uh, so using BTXML for printing is very ideally suited for, uh, why does this always come up? That's my VPN, in case people are wondering. Um, so yes, it's ideally suited for that bi-directional communication as you see with web services. But of course, it's not limited for use with web services. So in the BTXML, we can define metadata of the request, such as the document file to load, uh, the printer, the target printer we wish to print to, uh, the number of labels to print, the print job name, etc etc so all the meta information about how and where and what you wish to print we can also define the level of print job status and verification required so as part of that request we can say that we want to capture verification and perhaps wait x number of seconds for the printer to respond and give us that verification information. Of course, we can set labeled data either through the use of named data sources, so these are key value pairs, or by providing a, a record set of data, uh, such as comma separated values in a CSV, which can be embedded into the BTXML. Now we can run that script, that BTXML, uh, as a single command, or you can have a sequence of multiple commands which are executed one after the other, all within the one XML. And once it's processed, we get a response back. So bartender print engine will generate BTXML response for the print request, giving uh, information as to the success or failure of that print job, along with uh, various verification information. Uh, so that can be very detailed. Likewise, uh, many customers, in addition to printing, would also like a print preview. In the software that they're interacting with, perhaps they would like to see the print job on screen before it is printed so that they can confirm that the printing will be as they expect. And for this, they can make use of the print preview capability in BTXML. Of course, the use case of the preview, of course, is, as I mentioned, to show on screen to the user uh, the, the print preview, as is ordinarily the case. But also, it can be used uh, for logging purposes. Uh, so, if in addition to the print job verification information for, for logging in the data silo of the the software or the business system that's integrating with Bartender. Uh, in addition to that print job logging information, it could also store images of the label, if so desired. As part of the preview request, you of course can set the meta and label data just like you have with a print request, but you can also specify the type and quality of the preview images that will be generated. And the preview images themselves can be generated on the server as individual image files, or in a response, particularly if you're using uh, web services, as base64 encoded data. So you'd get that back as part of your web service request. And I, I have a, an example which we'll be looking at later. Moving on to the .NET SDK. Uh, this is one of the 
prime set of APIs that we have for Bartender that is, I guess, most often used. And we call it the SDK as opposed to an API, which is the programming application programming interface, uh, because it's not just the APIs themselves, which are the programmatic interfaces for accessing the software, but the SDK also includes various example projects for Visual Studio and also documentation on how uh, you control various aspects of the software. So a full reference on the different parts of the APIs and how you use them. And of course, example snippets of code. I see one question here, let's read it out. Do you still need enterprise edition to be able to preview uh, before printing? The answer to that is, I think the automation edition, as of Bartender 2021 at least, is sufficient. Okay, with Bartender 2021, uh, of course, with the .NET SDK and the various APIs, uh, we're looking at the .NET framework for the Windows platform. Uh, so this is not to be confused with .NET Core which is uh, a plant platform independent uh, part of the .NET. Uh, so you need the, the full fat Windows .NET framework at the present time. And with Bartender 2021, the version of the .NET framework is 4.72 or higher. With Bartender 2019, uh, the version of the .NET framework was 4.52 and 3.5. Uh, so with the newer versions of Bartender, uh, you need to update the, the .NET framework for your computer. The .NET APIs supported include the Print Engine API, Print Server, Print Scheduler, Librarian, and the System Database. So these are different APIs uh, that do different things in different ways and provide separate types of functionality. And we'll look at each one in turn in just a moment. As I mentioned, we have various example Visual Studio product uh, projects as part of the SDK that allow us to demonstrate various aspects of uh, the different APIs available. And also, of course, as part of the Bartender help system, we have a full reference on each of the APIs, giving many code examples in C Sharp, but also VB.net, if that is your preference. So first, let's look at the, the Print Engine API. This API provides a set of classes to launch and control what is essentially a single Bartender Print Engine. Now, of course, you can design your code so that you launch and control multiple instances of, of a Print Engine, uh, but that would be uh, infrastructure that you would need to implement the print engine is, as the name suggests, uh, providing you classes for interacting with a print engine. It offers direct access to, to uh, many of the more nuanced features of the Bartender software from an automation perspective. Uh, but because it's just uh, the single print engine, it's not very scalable, so it's not necessarily suitable for large server uh, solutions or implementations. Uh, because of this, it's ideally suited for the workstation environment. So if you have a bespoke app that you want to run on a workstation on a client PC uh, and they're interacting with this app 
performing different functions. One of the functions, of course, is to print a bartender uh, document. Then making use of the print engine API is ideal for that for that use case. Uh, also for print printing, print previewing of jobs, exporting of images, uh, modifying the page setup, modifying the database setup modifying the print setup of the document, setting named data sources or overriding record data. You can interrogate the document to get a full set of property information about that document. And you can also manage printers and the connection with the license server using the print engine API. So there's a lot of functionality you can dig into uh, just with the one instance of a bartender print engine. I guess the reverse of this is the print scheduler API. Uh, this is a more recent API, uh, which gives you essentially programmatic control over the print scheduler Windows service. So if you look at your services window in, in Windows, uh, you'll see that there are a number of bartender services listed, one of which is the print scheduler. And the print scheduler is mostly used for the integration platform because when the integration platform wants to perform bartender actions, it normally... Uh, makes a request for those actions through the print scheduler service and the print scheduler uh, service API. So when you're making calls to this API, whether it's for performing a print action, to export a print preview, uh, to export the document design as an image, uh, to run BTXML, query the document for information about that document or to get a list of printers for the bartender software, uh, then these are all actions you're submitting to the print scheduler service. And of course, looking to get results uh, back in terms of information, but also, for example, if you're printing uh, to produce a print job on the on the computer where the print scheduler service is running. Now the advantage of the print scheduler service is that the print scheduler service is always running in the background. We're using service orientated architecture there. So it's, it's uh, uh, much more reliable and always on uh, functionality and it's simply listening for actions being submitted to the service, and that service will then be responsible for assigning the request to an appropriate bartender print engine and performing the action that has been requested. And as such, this is very scalable, uh, and I'll show you how you can configure your print scheduler service shortly, uh, but it's very scalable, uh, making it ideal for larger implementations where there's high demand, high frequency of printing. The question here, when we export images, does Bartender support saving them in a vector format? Hmm. I guess we can take a look, uh, but certainly we can export them to PDF if that perhaps counts. Uh, but it's not going to be fully uh, vectorized format. There, there's going to be a certain amount of embedded bitmap type data in there. So probably not true vector format, although certainly aspects of the PDF 
will be using uh, vector data. Uh, I hope that answers the question. But we'll take a look at it a bit later. So in terms of configuring the print scheduler service, uh, first you'll find there is a XML configuration for called print scheduler dot service dot exe dot instance dot config. Uh, it's a bit of a long file name, I understand, uh, but you'll find that in the program directory of the bartender software. Now, ordinarily, uh, it is not needed to uh, modify or edit this file, but if you have particular requirements and because of your use case, there are particular configuration settings that you need for the print scheduler service to provide the, the response and the behavior you want, then of course you can modify this config file so that uh, the service uh, can do what you want. And essentially there are two sets of configurations that you may wish to modify. The first has to do with the caching of bartender documents in each bartender print engine. Uh, so as printing occurs, uh, as part of that printing process, a document be loaded into the memory that is used by one of the print engines and it will produce a print job. Now, unless specifically specified, the document will remain in memory. And this means that uh, for any subsequent print jobs, that document does not need to be reloaded. It can simply be used in a, in a cached fashion and used for that second or following print job. As part of the configuration, you can specify the maximum number of documents that you may wish to cache. I believe five is the default. You may wish to increase that. Uh, we can also uh, specify a time period uh, where if the document has not been used in that print engine for a specified amount of time, that it will automatically be closed or unloaded. And we can also specify how frequent uh, the documents are refreshed should there be file changes. Perhaps the more important uh, configuration has to do with the individual print engines themselves. So for example, you can set a maximum number of print engines in the collection of print engines that are controlled by the print scheduler service. If you wish, you can have that as a set number of print engines that uh, run from the beginning, or you can enable dynamic scaling, which is the, the default setting. And with dynamic scaling, uh, bartender print engines will be spawned, will be launched only as and when uh, demand requires it. So if printing demand is, is very low, then only one or two print engines will be launched. If demand is very high, then it will launch or spawn additional print engines up to the maximum. One reason why perhaps dynamic scaling is something you'd want to do is if it's a shared server, shared application server, and you don't want to use more resources of that server than is necessary, dynamic scaling makes sense. Or perhaps if you want to ensure highest performance, you have a dedicated server just for bartender, and you want as little latency from time of print request to time of print, then perhaps disabling, disabling dynamic scaling would be something you'd want to do so that the print engines are already running. 
at time of request. We can also define various startup commands where you can preload uh, popular documents if you wish. And you can specify a period of time in which each document, oh, sorry, each print engine would need to be reloaded uh, to, to re restart it uh, so that we can help ensure the robustness of the BART in the printing platform. Uh, if you're restarting a, a print engine, any um, problems or any memory leaks that might have been caused by external drivers, etc., uh, this can be mitigated against by simply restarting the print engine. So closing it down and then restarting it. If there are errors or, or bugs, not bugs, if there are any errors or failures uh, with the service or one of the commands that you execute, uh, then you can also set uh, your action queues to be recoverable. So if an action has not fully executed when there was a failure, uh, that action can be kept in the queue so that as the service gets restarted, for example, uh, the action can then be can then be uh, executed properly. And lastly, we can set the memory space for each engine. And this is Particularly the case, this is a space of memory that's used by, print en by a print engine for its own internal uh, requirements. And essentially, you would leave this as it is, as the default. The only reason you may wish to change this uh, and change this with a, a higher value is if you're choosing to cache additional documents. And therefore, each print engine might have or might, might be making use of more documents that are loaded into that print engine. And therefore, you'd want to increase the what's called the desktop memory heap size in order to account for that. The librarian API. As part of the BART and the Enterprise Edition, uh, we have included a, a document management and revision control system uh, to aid the process of document design uh, to give traceability over that design process and control over that design process, which is typically required by many um, regulated industries. As part of this, there are applications. So we have the librarian application with which a user can interact directly with for performing the document management and also the workflow designer for designing the workflows. What librarian API brings is the ability to perform many of these librarian actions programmatically. So instead of having the user interact with the, the bartender application, the librarian application, they can perform these actions through the use of the API, such as to add a, a file or a document to the repository or to remove it or to check it in or to check it out. Uh, to execute uh, revision rollbacks, workflow transitions, to change the state of a particular file, uh, to perform approve or reject uh, actions as part of an approval workflow, and to establish uh, a librarian watcher events to monitor to to monitor for changes in files in particular watched folders. 
So the Librarian API really does allow you to perform document management as part of the software solution that your customers or perhaps yourselves would be looking to implement. System Database API. Well, firstly, let's establish what the system database is. Uh, basically, this is a database that's hosted by a SQL Server instance, and it's used for keeping bartender generated data. What do I mean by bartender generated data? Well, of course, the first option is the librarian repository, so the, your managed documents, for example. Also, global data fields, uh, security configuration of the bartender software, but also print job, application message, uh, application messages, security checks, and printer event logs. So these are all uh, traceability logs for the different aspects of what goes on inside the software, with print job logs perhaps being the most important. Uh, the System Database API in particular allows you access or programmatic access to this logged data, this treasure trove of data that your applications might wish to get hold of for the purpose, of course, of generating reports. And it also offers the ability, uh, the method of reprinting historical print jobs as well. So as part of the API, you can define, make your connection to your particular system database instance that you wish to use. Uh, you can create a filter that allows you to define various uh, parameters on the query that you wish to make, uh, such as the date and time, the user, uh, particular data that you wish to search on, various criteria that you can specify as part of your your filter or, or query and then of course to execute that and and get back in a response as a result the the uh, returned data from from the system database so this is very much this same set of data as you can see in the history explorer application Whereas with the History Explorer, it doesn't really have any strong uh, reporting capability. But with the API, you can get the, the precise data that you want and then present that in a report format within your own implemented uh, software. Again, we'll have a demo of this later. Next, uh, the REST-based uh, web services. Uh, so what I mean by that is, yes, we have the Print Portal API, but also integration platform. And I'll show you why I include integration platform in just a moment. So with Print Portal, this is the web application uh, from the Enterprise Edition of Bartender. And Print Portal is an interactive web app that allows a print operator to navigate to a web page to select the document and then to print that document in a very interactive fashion. With the API, as before, we can do this programmatically. And because we're working with a web application endpoint, uh, essentially, you do this through REST-based web services. Uh, so essentially, a web API. Uh, so these are various uh, predefined fixed endpoints that are hosted by Print Portal. So this is different from 
integration platform where you build your own web services, uh, your own web service endpoints and define what they do. And that's hosted by the integration service of the integration platform. With Print Portal, the web services are built into Print Portal web application and it is the web application uh, that is hosting and responding. So two separate things doing uh, similar work, you could say. Now with REST API in Bartender 2021, uh, basically this is version one of the REST API, so we can only perform relatively straightforward functions. Uh, so for example, you can authenticate the user uh, because this is a web application, we may want to ensure that the user is, is allowed uh, to make use of the API. You can, of course, use anonymous as well if you prefer. The main critical feature, of course, is to print a document setting a variable data at time of print uh, to get uh, document library information so you wish to know what it is available to print and also getting printers so you want to know where you can print to. And this is all part of an open API specification as, as you see there in the image uh, we're using uh, Swagger to help with the documentation of the web API uh, so you can go to the the Swagger URL on the print portal uh, to get uh, reference information on how to use the API. And as we see there at the bottom, this is version one, uh, so we, we are planning to extend further in future versions of the software. Now I include integration platform here, because of course integration platform does support web services. So from a web application or a modern business system, web service requests can be made and the user can build uh, a web service integration in which we can implement programmatic actions. Uh, so the two key programmatic actions we support is PowerShell and SQL. So with PowerShell, it's a very capable scripting language uh, for Windows that supports a wide variety of native commands through their applets. But also in addition, it's built upon the .NET framework. So pretty much anything you can do in the .NET framework, including using the bartender .NET SDK, you can do in PowerShell. So, for example, if you wish to make use of the API, but then expose that on a web service, you may wish to implement this in the integration platform, uh, making use of a PowerShell action. And I'll show you some examples of this later. Uh, likewise, uh, perhaps you'd want to uh, perform some database uh, transactions. Uh, you can make use of SQL. You can execute uh, SQL on the integration platform in response again to a web service request and get a response back to the calling web application or, or business system. Uh, so I include integration platform there because it can be a very useful way of exposing a, a programmatic function on a web service without having to build that web service programmatically. And now we move on to the legacy stuff uh, just to, to cover this. Now the first one is actually part of the .NET SDK and I term this as being legacy uh, because the purpose of the print server API is to offer a task-based 
uh, structure uh, for managing uh, your print engines to submit tasks to essentially a queue and for those tasks to then be executed. And of course, this is pretty much what the print scheduler does. Uh, so in older versions of Bartender, we first had the print server API. And then in more recent versions of Bartender, we introduced the print scheduler service, which from my perspective, essentially in some ways replaced the need for the print server API. However, if for legacy reasons, uh, you've already built an implementation using it, or if there are some key reasons why you might want to, uh, the print server API is still very much available and usable. It's, it's not deprecated or anything like that. It's just, from my perspective, I see the print scheduler service as being much easier to use and more available. Next, ActiveX, also known as COM Automation. Again, this is still supported. Uh, basically, ActiveX was, was the forerunner or the predecessor to the .NET framework. Uh, ActiveX uh, is a common technology used on the Windows platform for software interoperability. Uh, it's also known as COM Automation, as it says there. The functionality of this API is very similar to what you see in the .NET Print Engine API. And therefore, again, it's well suited for running on a workstation type implementation. Uh, because this is old technology, if you're using a more old school uh, integrated development environment, also known as an IDE, uh, such as Visual Basic 6 or Delphi, uh, which you still see hanging around, uh, then the use of COM automation uh, is perfectly acceptable with that. And we still, of course, have some users still successfully making use of this particular API. Of course, though, this is unmanaged code, so you'd lose a lot of the advantages of the .NET framework, uh, where it takes care of memory and all that sort of stuff. And lastly, command lines. Uh, so command lines, this is really going back to the DOS days, uh, Microsoft DOS of Windows, of, of computers rather, <laughs> uh, but it's still available in Windows, of course, from a command line. And essentially, this is where you're calling the, the bartend.exe itself, so bartend application file, and then introducing various command options. Uh, so some common uh, command options would be to load a particular document, to specify a printed target, uh, if you need to connect to a data file, you can define the data file that you wish to connect to, set the number of copies that you wish to print or serial numbers, and then execute. And it will execute the bartender application and perform those actions as part of that. So a common use case of command lines is, is to be set up in a shortcut icon on a user's desktop for example so when they double click on the shortcut it actually runs the command line to print the label and sometimes it could be the case that the document may have a data entry form in which case the data entry form will be displayed just on its own no none of the bart in the application uh, the user interacts with the data entry form and then it closes down. Uh, so a very simple, clean uh, implementation of straightforward label printing. 
Uh, so still very much useful today. And as with many of the features with automation, uh, command lines included, you will need the automation edition of Bartender. Okay, enough of the presentation. Let's go hands-on with First, in Bartender Designer, we could create a document And from that document, we can add content like so. And let's say a barcode as well. And at the moment, both of these data items have a fixed value. If we want to set a value via automation, then it's important to expose that and the Two principal ways of doing that is first to set a, a named data source for your for your item. Uh, so let's call this part number, for example. Put in default value. So now that particular data source for this particular object is essentially creating a uh, a public variable to the scope of the document for that data source. And we can set that via an API. So we can see a named data source there called part number. And indeed, if I drag and drop that onto the label, it's, it's essentially a copy of that data source, a reference to that data. So it changes the data like so. The second way, of course, is label data. So this is where we're connecting our document to a record-based data source. And typically, if you want to override a data source rather than being connected to a fixed database, we would have to use a text-based data file. Uh, so this is a text file such as CSV data, XML data, JSON data, and also SAP IDOC. So for this example, I'll just choose a text file. And as part of the design process, I can either link to a dummy data file or I can just embed some sample data directly into the user interface. This is where I need to go and quickly fetch some uh, example data. Uh, let me see if I can find that. There we go. Copy and paste. So here's some record data here. So first line contains the field names and then with some dummy data in the second row, uh, the wizard will automatically detect the type and format of the data and we can see the fields are appropriately specified. With this complete, you'll see that we have our connection and we can give the connection a specific name. So I could call it text underscore data, for example. Like so. If I then went to print or preview, of course, oops, I would want to make use of a field first, I suppose. That's a good idea. So the company name, let's use this uh, zip code for the barcode. All very simple, straightforward. So when it comes to automation, of course, we can also override that data file connection. So swapping out the dummy data with transactional data coming from our 
application that we've implemented. Now, to begin, we're looking at BTXML. Uh, so with BTXML, the first thing I would suggest you do is take a look at our help system. Our help system, you pardon the pun, is very helpful, uh, showing various aspects of the software. Uh, but the part that you want to take a look at is automating bartender. And in automating bartender, you can see that we have different topics that covers the .NET SDK, uh, bartender XML script, command line reference, and also ActiveX or COM automation. So those different APIs each have their full reference. It should be noted that we also have online help of Bartender. So if you go to a web browser, you can go to the online help, which is help.segalscientific.com. But when you come to the automating bartender section, for technical reasons, you'll notice that there is not a topic for the, the .NET SDK. There are technical reasons behind this. Uh, I believe at some point in the future, it will also be in the online help system. Uh, but for the moment, if you do need a reference on the .NET SDK, you'll need to take a look at the installed software help system. Okay, so let's look at Bartender XML script. As with each of the APIs, we have a getting started section that introduces you to, to the topic and gives you some very simple examples of often used use cases. So we can see with the BTXML, it's XML uh, data, uh, but it's also very self-descriptive. So we can see that we, under a command we wish to print, we specify the format, also known as a document that we wish to load. We can perform some print setup where we can specify the number of serialized labels, the name of the printer we wish to print, etc. And of course, this is all in the print element, so it will print what you have defined. And as you can see, we can also have a sequence of such commands that execute one after the other in sequence. As we've seen previously, uh, let's show this one is the most used case. We want to set variable data. Uh, so as part of that XML script request, we can in addition to loading a document, we can define the name of our record set. So this is the name that I defined here. So this is the name of our data connection. So in this example is text data. Uh, so here is what you specify the name of the record set. And that specifies what it is we wish to override. And as you can see here, we can contain or embed record data within the BTXML script using the C data method. So it's, it's an XML thing. We can also use it for setting uh, named data sources on the document directly as well. And in button XML script, we're using what used to be the old name of named data sources, which was a named substring. 
I think in Bartender 2016, we changed from named substring to named data sources. But of course, in the BTXML, we call it named substring still. So that's meaning the same thing. So in the getting started, we have various examples of how you would go about implementing that. And then of course, we have a full reference. And in that full reference, we have the various commands for printing or exporting to print preview, but also to, to set up a, a document and also the response to what we get back from our requests. So a response would, for example, look like this, where it's giving metadata information about the status and verification of the print job, including a message saying that we printed successfully to, to printer X with the name of the document. In terms of how we would go about executing this, well, first let's um, let's save this document. And I'll call it example. How can we go about executing? In the past, under the file menu, uh, in older versions of Bartender, there was an option for executing BTXML script. Uh, that was removed, I think, in Bartender 2019. Instead, if you wish to run BTXML script, you can do so in the integration builder. So if I switch over to the integration builder and go to the test section, we can test some BTXML script. Uh, so it, it would ask for a file, which you could then execute. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. Another way is to build an integration. And so, for example, if I create an integration, a web service integration, uh, let's call it uh, BTXML. Uh, the input data, of course, would be BTXML script. I'll go with the standard response. And instead of a pre-built uh, print document action, we can instead, as our action, run BTXML script directly. And from that, we could take the content of the XML script that we're receiving and execute that. Uh, so for example, I've done this previously with a print preview action. I've already uh, set this up. Uh, so if we look at this, Essentially, we're sending BTXML in a payload of our web service request. So we're making the event data reference there. I do have an XSL transform to, to remove the other data and just send back the, the picture data. Uh, so if I test this and switch to my REST client, 
and choose the print preview option. Here we can see our BTXML script. So in this BTXML script, we're choosing the export print preview to image uh, tag element. And importantly, because this is a web service request, we're asking for the images to be in the returned response. So we're setting that to true. If you do not set that, then we'll be generating picture files on the server. Uh, we'll set our document. So this is an address label in this case, and setting some data on, on that document, and then getting a response. So if I send that, on the integration, we can see that it's executing. And here we see our returned base64 encoded picture data. So imagine instead of uh, a REST client, uh, this request is being made by a business system or by a web application, and it wants to present uh, a preview of picture data in the user interface to the print operator, uh, making a simple request like so using XML script allows you to get that result. Now, of course, it could be the case that uh, instead you're making your request with just some JSON data, for example, and on the server side, Let's go to the preview. So on the server side, what we could do let's go to this one. Instead of uh, taking the entire uh, event data uh, for the BTXML script. Instead, we could change this to embedded data and paste in your bartender XML script here. And instead, replace items such as the document to load with variables. And these variables are set with with the, the JSON values that are coming from the web service request. Uh, so in essence, uh, for BTXML by web services, uh, the software sending the web service request could be sending BTXML directly, or you could have that BTXML embedded in your integration, and you're just inserting the variable data items uh, for how that BTXML is to execute, such as to which document to load, which printer to print to, uh, in case of a preview, uh, the quality of the print job, etc. cetera. Uh, so you have a choice on how you may wish to implement that. Hopefully that makes sense. We'll be looking at BTXML in a minute as well. Um, but now I'd like to move on to the .NET APIs. Now, firstly, you need to know where the, the SDK is located. Uh, so if you are, open up Windows Explorer from the C drive, Go to Program Files directory, and from here you'll find Seagull and the Bartender application folder where the Bartender software is installed. Uh, but if you go to the SDK folder, in here you will find the Bartender.NET SDK. In the first folder, you have various assemblies. You have the librarian API sample. 
print engine sample. So as you can see with print engine, we have a few different uh, projects. So if we go to label print, for example, we can see that we have a project either in C sharp or Visual Basic. And in here, you can see the project file that you can open up in Visual Studio, inspect how it all fits together, and of course, build and run it and use that to leverage that code in your own implementations. Well, we have a question here. Why isn't it possible to create or export BTXML script uh, sample, including the named data sources directly from the designer? This is especially useful if there's a lot of named substrings. Yes, this is a very common and popular request. Uh, it would be nice if we could export to a text-based format such as XML or JSON, uh, the full set of names and, and default values of the named data sources in a document. I would say, uh, so that's not natively supported. However, it is possible to implement. So yes, Unfortunately, we do have a limitation on that at present, but you could quite quickly and easily build an implementation, uh, be that in a, a Visual Studio project or even an integration that could get that information for you. Because using the APIs, uh, whether it's the Print Engine API or indeed the Print Scheduler API, you can extract that information and then output it in a JSON or XML format, for example. So it is possible, it's just we don't support it out of the box as a native feature to make your life easy. Uh, sorry for that, I do apologize. It is on our wish list and we are looking to I guess, implement at some point. Okay. So we have print engine API samples doing various things, such as to export print preview, to show label printing, uh, to demonstrate how uh, print job status monitoring and verification can function. Print previewing, uh, it's kind of similar to the first one there. I think it does it in a slightly different way. And also an XML scripter. So it shows you how you can execute BTXML via the Print Engine API. And lastly, uh, print server examples. And with the print server example, uh, Taskmaster, uh, this is an example that's using the actual print server API, uh, but also we have this web label print. And the web label print project is, well, as the name suggests, for internet uh, web-based label printing, uh, but it's using the uh, internet or web based label printing from Barton 2019 and previous. Uh, but actually makes use of the print scheduler service as part of its implementation. Uh, so if you want to, to see uh, an actual use case of print scheduler service in action, then the web label print example does include uh, some code in there that shows you how that is used. Now what I do is I take a copy of the SDK and I drop it into my own personal work folders. So here we see the bartender SDK, I put some help files and other stuff in there as well. Uh, so it allows me to 
make changes to those projects in a copy. Uh, so I'm not touching the the installed SDK. I, I'm modifying a copy of the SDK. So let's take a look at the what a couple of those projects. So for this, I open up a Visual Studio. Show the start window, for example. And from uh, Visual Studio, which is Microsoft's main IDE, Integrated Development Environment, uh, we can open up one of these projects. And incidentally, uh, if I just quickly go to my browser, you can download these code editors from the Visual Studio Microsoft website. You can go for the full Visual Studio, uh, which gives you access to the full .NET framework stuff and much else besides. And you can choose to download either paid for editions, so enterprise or professional, but the community edition is free. So if you're just starting off in the world of coding and you don't want to pay money, um, the community edition is a great way to start you off. Alternatively, if you're not you if you're not using the full .NET framework, uh, then Visual Studio Code is ideal for web app developers, for example, using JavaScript and whatever else that you may wish to be programming in. Uh, the Visual Studio Code is a great programming text editor. Again, I very much recommend. And again, is also free for use. May also be the case you need to download and update your .NET SDKs. You'll notice that there's the .NET Core and there's .NET Framework. When it comes to using Bartender's .NET APIs, you need the full .NET Framework uh, versions. And of course, 4.72 for Bartender 2021 is the version you need. You have the developer pack if you're developing uh, an application implementation for Bartender, and the runtime if your user is just needing to run such an application. Okay, so let's take a look at the first project. This is where I cross my fingers and hope everything works. Okay, so, uh, oops, where did I go? So in the Bartender SDK, in my own particular folder, I'll open up the print engine API samples and I'll start with the label print project. Uh, C sharp and open it up. Okay, so this opens uh, the project and uh, you can see there are different aspects of the project here. Uh, the first thing you should do whenever uh, making a project that's to make use of Bartender's API is from the project menu, you need to add a reference to the, the Bartender or the Siegel Scientific, uh, what they call namespace. So if you go to extensions, extending the software, you will want to find the siegel.bartender.print uh, item. You'll notice there's also the print scheduler if you're looking to make use of the print scheduler API. Uh, so this is part of the bartender software, and this is part of the, or the bartender print engine, should I say, and this is part of the print scheduler service, which is, if you like, a, a separate piece of software. Uh, so with the reference made, you'll see under references, strangely enough, uh, seagull.bartender.print is listed. And then, of course, 
we can see the application. So this is an interactive application. So it's got a, a window and so you can see or kind of get an idea of what the application will be doing. So you can open a document, uh, you can set name substrings and of course the printer and number of copies and that the fact you wish to print. If you want to see the code behind that, then right click and choose view code. So here we can see the code behind the form as it relates to interacting with the bartender via the API. Importantly, we're using seagull.bartender.print. Uh, so we're, we're loading that in. And from here, we can see different aspects of the code. And you'll notice that we're making use of these regions to help um, to help format uh, the code in a digestible way. So I'm just reading a question there. Okay, so first off, um, in the class label print, what we're doing is we're start, we are defining an engine, we're setting the document to nothing, and just basic uh, general setup stuff. Under enumerations, we're setting some more information. I guess, where's the, the main relevant piece of information? I, I guess this section of code here. Uh, so when the form is loaded, so when the form is loaded, what we're doing is we're creating a new bartender print engine using the engine class of the print engine uh, API. If there's a problem with that, we'll catch a, uh, catch a, uh, an error and show that as a message. And we also want to get a list of printers. So part of the print engine class, there's also a printers class that allows us to enumerate out uh, the printers, which we can add to a, a pull down combo uh, form control to set the source of that. We can then set up the images used in the browser. So we can generate images there. And then we want to do stuff such as when we close the form, we want to unload things. We want to set the engine to null and to stop it. So that's closing things down and cleaning things up. The important bit, of course, is when you click to open a particular document, we make use of the API there to load the document into the print engine. And of course, when we wish to click uh, to print, we want to print the document. Perhaps if I actually show you what this looks like, gives you a better idea. So I just, I've already built the, the application, so I just run it. Hopefully my PC is able to cope running all these things at the same time. Eventually it appears, <laughs> okay. Uh, so here we see our form. If I click on the open button, I can specify a folder where my bartender documents are located. This one here. And that then enumerates out all of my documents, giving a little thumbnail image of each. I can select one of these. So just a simple test label. 
double click. Here we can see that it's inspected that document and it's found the list of named data sources. So we've got the name of the data source and I can set the value of the data source. So I can set this to AAA777 and XYZ555. So this goes back to a question that was asked earlier about getting the name data sources. As you can see here, we're using the Print Engine API to get a list of those named data sources, giving us the name and also the current value of that named data source. Now, rather than just using that for setting that as part of a print job, you can, of course, output that to a text file, uh, thereby giving you the result or the information that you wanted. If I hit print, it will produce a print job. I get a, a response window informing me of the success of that. And indeed, if I switch to the History Explorer, which is the companion application of Bartender that allows us to see historical print jobs, we can see that label printed successfully with that variable data that we specified. So as you see, this application is very simple, straightforward, interactive with the user, so it's ideal for a workstation type environment. Uh, not so useful if you need a scaled up uh, server printing application where there are high frequency of print requests coming in from multiple users, or multiple business systems, and therefore needs to scale up. Uh, for that, you would want to look at instead making use of the print scheduler or print server APIs. So please do take a look at uh, these SDK examples because yes, there's also additional uh, code functionality in there depending on what the application is doing. Uh, but you should certainly find them to be useful. Let's close this solution and open another. And for the next one, I'll take a look at the XML scripter. And this is another useful uh, application if you want to see uh, and test Bartender XML script. Uh, we saw earlier that we can execute BTXML script from the integration builder from here, and you'd have to specify a file. But what's nice with the XML scripter uh, SDK example, so if I start this up, I've already previously built it. It offers us a window into which we can paste our XML script and then we can see the result, which, which is nice. So for example, let's uh, take an example here. I'm going to be building this in real time, so hopefully nothing goes wrong. I can paste in some button the XML script. Let's change that printer to be a barcode printer or printer uh, B. Name of our document. Well, where did I save this document here? Where is it? Example, where did I save that? Too many things going on. Did I save it to the desktop? 
or into webinar. Okay. Actually, I can just uh, so see, see, go button there. Uh, so desktop. Backslash webinar. Now, if people are wondering, hey, Ian, are you stupid? Uh, this is not the correct path. Well, for reasons of convenience, I set up a, a redirect from Seagull to that folder to my desktop. So it makes uh, my path much easier to use. Uh, example, not example one. Okay. So example bot D B T W. Uh, did I have a name data source? Yes, one called part number. So I'll change this to part number. Put in something, uh, and this was called text data, wasn't it? comma and quote delimination and what I need is some different CSV data uh, so let me just quickly find that so here's some transactional data and what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste that in bang so it's not Ian Cummings, it's someone else instead. So I'm opening up the correct document, doing my print setup, two copies, barcode printer B, I'm setting my named data source for the text object, and I'm transferring in some record data as well. This is where I cross my fingers that everything is set correctly. Please work. It will think about that and give me a response. Damn, success. I can breathe easy. So we sent the print job to barcode printer B and let's take a look at History Explorer to see what it found see what it recorded and yes there we see the data with the named data source information that I set and also it's using um, the transactional uh, record data that I embedded into the BTXML of course I could do with some formatting of my document design but that's that's for another day all right, perhaps I can do it now. Let's use a, let's just select all of them and aerial font. And perhaps make this a paragraph object. Okay, it'll work better next time. So with the uh, XML scripter, it allows us See how that works, how you can execute BTXML via the print engine. But also, if you want it just for testing BTXML, uh, it's a very useful and handy feature to have for your own requirements. And of course, you can load and save XML into that. So let's take a look at the code quickly. the main uh, meat of it of course we're making our reference to the, the print engine uh, here we see the window and of course we can look at the code behind in this uh, under the xml script and namespace we have the def different uh, regions of our code and 
let's find where the meat is. Essentially, we're creating a new engine instance, a bartender print engine. And for the print engine, let's see if we can find the precise part of code that I want. Um, we're making use of a background thread for the print engine where we uh, can have multi-threaded uh, multi um, programming. So it, it, it happens as a, as, as a separate thread, so it doesn't lock up the user interface, keeps the application being responsive. But what you'll see with XML script is extremely easy because XML script as a method is supported directly by the print engine. So it's just a method of the print engine. All you need to do is substantiate an engine instance and then call the XML script method. And you can pass the XML script either as a string or as a reference to the file in which the XML script is contained. Uh, someone's saying that's the reason I asked for this. I have always the same. Uh, what's that about? Oh, it's about the, the, the name data sources. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so XML script from the print engine API is directly supported as a method. And indeed, if I come to the bartender help system, uh, take a look at the .NET SDK. Oops. Too many things open at once. Uh, trying to keep it straightforward. Uh, looking at the SDK, uh, looking at the reference, uh, print namespace. We have a lot of classes there, as you see. Uh, but if we look at the engine class, Come on, computer, don't let me down. <laughs> Come on. If we look at the engine class, uh, we can see uh, the methods there include XML script. There you go. So if you click on one of those, it tells you all about it and of course includes a code example. So if you want a more straightforward and simple use of this, you can do it here where we're substantiating an engine. We're setting a variable, a string variable with some XML script, just embedding it right in there. And from there, we then execute and capture any messages that are generated. So it can be very simple very straightforward. In addition to the print engine, we got print scheduler, which I see as of equal importance with the print engine API. And to some extent, perhaps even more important in my view. Again, we have the, the getting started section, which shows you how to use the print scheduler API for some common tasks. And then you have the full reference for the various classes that the API supports. Concerning BTXML, we can see that in fact, the code for this perhaps is even more straightforward than with print engine. Because the print scheduler service is taking care of a lot of the print engine management for you, all you're simply doing is submitting tasks. So you define your task and then you submit it to the service for processing. So in this example, we're setting a string variable with our BTXML script, like so. 
and then we're defining what's called a, a btxml action. So we create a new action instance. We set the XML string to the variable we created earlier, and then we can run it. Bang, simple as that, very straightforward. Of course, we can specify some additional commands, attributes, parameters in terms of how that runs. Uh, but because much of the command is actually in the btxml itself. Uh, to a great extent, that's not necessary because it's the btxml that defines how much of the action is processed, such as if it's a print document action or a print preview action, if you're setting variable data, if you're wanting to wait for print job verification, etc. All of that can be set in the BTXML. You simply define your task and then you run it. And you can run it either sequentially uh, or synchronous, synchronously or asynchronously, uh, depending on the use case of your application. Once you run that action, of course, you then want to capture the result. Uh, so, when you run the action, the service responds with information that contains the result of that action, which you can then handle accordingly. In addition to running a BT XML action, of course, in Print Scheduler, uh, you may wish to run what we call a print action. So this is where you're programmatically defining your print job directly as opposed to through the BTXML. Uh, so as you create your new print action, so you're submitting your action to the service, you can define various uh, properties of that action, such as the name of the print job, the name of the document, the name of the printer, how many labels you wish to print, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so you define those various properties of the action. Once that's all defined, you call the run. Uh, and that's either to run synchronously, or as we see in this example, uh, asynchronously. So in fact, uh, Yeah, it tells you here that if you use just the run method, this will run asynchronously. And if you run synchronous, where you're being more specific, uh, then it's running that action synchronously, where we are, where we stop in the code waiting for the response to come back before the code continues with its execution. Whereas asynchronous is more event-based uh, programming. Perhaps that's more of a uh, advanced topic which we won't be covering today. Uh, coming back to one of the questions that were asked earlier, we can also run the print scheduler for querying a document or perhaps on this one, getting information about the document. So you create a query, a document action, and then you add various request parameters to that action. Uh, so you can discover its name, uh, the file name, the base name of the document, printer setup, uh, but also now, of course, it doesn't have it in this example. You could also get your named data sources. Uh, so, for example, I think it's going to be in here somewhere. Uh, quest parameters. Of course, it's going to be the case. I'm not going to be able to find it when I'm looking for it. 
uh, but it is in there somewhere where you can get the named data sources and much else besides from your document. Okay, uh, where's my, did I stop my script? Yes, I did. So let's close this one down. close the solution down and I think we wanted to take a, a look at some more so we also have the preview and the, the monitor and all the rest I can't do monitoring at the moment because I don't actually have a printer connected to my PC I'm working from home uh, so I can't really show you that in action. Uh, certainly, if you do have that, you can open up that uh, Visual Studio project and demonstrate it. It's actually, I will, I will open it just to at least show you. So basically with this application, you would open up the document, you would choose your printer, and you would then print and you would capture the status and verification messages from that print job. If, if we look at the code behind there, and I must admit, I did not look at this earlier, so I don't know where the code is hiding. Uh, I guess it's going to be in the event handlers when I'm doing stuff. Uh, so when they click on a button, I suppose. So we're creating an engine. We're setting up various event handlers. So if the job is cancelled, if there's an error, if, when the job is sent, etc., we're listening for those events to to be fired. And when those events occur, we want to do stuff. We want to handle those events in some fashion. Where is the print? You can see we're using the export image to file in order to show a thumbnail image of the picture of the document that we're wishing to to print and somewhere around here is the uh, the print item and again in order to keep the the user interface uh, what's the word, um, interactive and, and functional. Uh, we're making use of uh, a background worker in a separate thread so that the, yeah, the user interface is, is not locked up at any point during the process. So at the very least, uh, these code examples will show you how you could go about doing that so you have a non-balking uh, application uh, because of course producing a print job in bartender and if you're waiting for a response that's a non-trivial uh, process action uh, particularly if we're listening for a response from the printer that can take a number of seconds to come back with a response and therefore during that time you don't want your your application to be blocked to be to be hung so to speak uh, so you'd want that all to be executing in a separate thread. Uh, so this is why we've uh, implemented this particular project using that sort of programming technique. Okay, so um, here's the code where we're calling the print and in that 
as part of the request, we're listening for the response. And I guess I shouldn't have <laughs> taken a look at this example because it's, the code is not necessarily entirely clear on how that all fits together. I'm just looking at it very quickly like we're doing here. Uh, so perhaps instead, if I go back to the, the help, I look at the print engine. And in the table format document, it is here where we uh, call the print. And you can see that we can, what's the term? You can over overload the method depending on if we want to have um, or listen for verification, uh, get messages from the request. So if we choose this one here, so we can see that with this additional parameters, we can set the print job name, we can wait for completion timeout, and we can capture the messages like so. So this is how you do that with a print engine. You can do this very similar with VTXML and of course with the print scheduler API. Uh, perhaps it's more readable with BTXML as to how that happens. Uh, so if I go to BTXML example, actually, if I look at the reference, uh, that's the response the reference, thank you, um, on the print action, the print tag, if we look at that, you can see that with the print uh, element, we can specify uh, multiple attributes, such as setting the print job name, uh, we can wait for job to complete, and set a timer for how long we wish to wait before we, how long we wish to wait for the printer before we continue on, and what level of data that we want to include in the response. So we can return print data, summary information, label data, and also a checksum. Incidentally, all of these items you see here in terms of getting and capturing print job verification if we look in the integration platform and let's just create a new integration quickly from a print document action these verification options here where for example we wish to wait to verify that the print job has been processed. We can specify maximum amount of time, and then we can choose what level of data is to be included in the response. All of these options you see here in the integration platform is equal to what we see in the BTXML, and also, of course, uh, parameter values that you set in either the print engine API or the print scheduler service when you're making uh, an action request. Certainly BTXML makes it much more visible and self-explanatory to understand. It should be noted that in the integration platform, when we execute a print document action, what we're really doing behind the scenes uh, as we're building this action is we're generating BTXML 
which is then executed at the time of this action actually running. So all of these selections you make here is actually in the background building BTXML, which is then executed at runtime. So all of these options here is being, building the BTXML, which is then executed. Like so. Okay, so with the .NET APIs and with BTXML, you can execute each of those in various different ways. Uh, of course, in a Windows application using the .NET APIs, uh, Print Engine, if it's a very much a workstation type environment, you're just wanting to interact with a single bartender print engine or using Print Scheduler service if you want a more scaled up solution uh, and more straightforward, define an action and then submit that to the service for executing either synchronously or asynchronously. And that's very much abstracting a lot of the complex complexity of your coding uh, so that you can either produce a solution very quickly and easily uh, with the bartender side not really taking too much effort when you're using the print scheduler service. Or because you, you, uh, it, your, your solution is for the server side and you really need that scalability. Actually, one thing I should do is show you the configuration of the print scheduler service. So if I go to the program directory of Bartender again, go down to the letter P and you'll see print scheduler.service.exe.instance.config. Make sure it's the one that has, oops, make sure it has the word Uh, instance in it because there is another one that doesn't and that's not the right one. You need the one that says instance and we can open that in the text editor. So let's move this down onto a screen. So as you can see it's an XML file. Uh, a lot of it is not needed for you to and make any changes and it's all uh, self-descriptive in many ways. Uh, the main areas of interest are the caching of documents. So by default we are caching a maximum of five documents per print engine. So you'll notice that's a per print engine. So if you're let's say running five print engines that will be five times five as the maximum number of documents that could be held in memory at any one time with five documents in each of the five but in the print engines. So have that in mind when you're specifying your number of print engines and the number of documents that would be cached. So that's cached per print engine. And you'll see that there's documentation here that tells you what each of the settings and values does. Scroll down further and we come to the print engine section. And what you see here are the default settings of the print engine in as controlled by the print scheduler service. And again, we have documentation in the comments that describe how that all works. By default, we have a maximum number of free print engines. However, if this is a, a big server, maybe you want 10 print engines to really increase the amount of throughput that can be produced 
at any one time. The restart uh, by default is every hour and I'd recommend you, you leave it at that. And startup command, this is where you can specify to load a bartender document. So for this, you can use the uh, command line syntax, for example, to load a document, oops, without the quote, Let's see, uh, colon backslash seagull backslash test dot btw, for example. And what that will do is every time a bot in the print engine launches, it will automatically load that document into the memory of that print engine so it's ready to use. And this helps uh, ensure that the print engines are as responsive as possible because they're already running and they already have the document loaded into memory. You'll notice that dynamic scaling can be set to true or false. If set to true, it, the number of print engines can be from zero to three, depending on how busy your print server is. If it's set to false, and this start on demand is set to false as well, then as soon as the print scheduler service starts, it will start all of the number of print engines from the very beginning. Uh, so this is perhaps wasteful of resources if you're not always doing high volume printing, but if you are doing high volume printing and you want as little latency, so you're not having to wait for a print engine to, to be launched, uh, you want as little latency as possible, then you would want to have all of your print engines running with no dynamic scaling if that makes sense. And just as a reminder, the print scheduler service is used by the integration platform, just as it is used by the print scheduler API. Uh, so what you set here would also affect anything in either of those approaches. Don't save. See a question there, creating a print ready BTW document through integration. Is that only possible with .NET API or also via the integration platform? Well, creating a print ready document um, needs to be done in the bartender designer, such as we see here. Uh, so currently, uh, the APIs, uh, the integration platform, anything else, we can only perform actions on already created and designed bartender documents as created in the bartender designer. Perhaps at some point in the future, uh, we would be able to programmatically, via an API, generate a bartender document on the fly, uh, but that functionality, sadly, is not available yet. Uh, cross fingers for the future. What the APIs do do is it allows you to print, to preview, to query and get information from a document, uh, to change various parameters of the document, etc. Okay, uh, Print Portal. Print Portal is the web application that allows a user to select and print labels interactively, like so. Um, someone's been messing with this again. Yep, someone's been messing with the website. <laughs> Let's use my local one instead. Uh, so, for example, uh, GS1, uh, logistics. 
So in an interactive fashion, they can navigate through the site, uh, choose the printer that they want, print and preview. If there's a dead entry form, they can interact with that. So it's a very, it's, it's a web application. So you can host a print portal out on the internet somewhere and it's able to print over the public internet to an on-premise printer. So it's not just limited to standard Windows printing. And of course, it's very fine uh, with the web application, but it may be the case that a customer wants that same functionality, i.e. bartender out on the internet, available to web applications, uh, but to perform those, those printing or previewing uh, functions programmatically. Uh, so for this, on the Print Portal web application, we expose a web API, it's a REST-based API from which we can perform a few different functions. So we can authenticate the user, we can perform automated printing, setting a variable data, we can get information about the documents that are stored in the print portal and also the printers that are available for printing, be it for standard Windows printing, or for internet printing. And as part of the Swagger API, we have documentation and there's functionality that help with the process of testing this. So you can use the, the, the Swagger uh, documentation and test facility uh, for that end. Although my preference is to use my own REST client. So with the REST client, I have some previously made uh, items as you see here. Uh, so first, if I've enabled authentication and by default it's anonymous authentication for Print Portal, but if you do enable authentication, uh, then your first request would be to get what's known as a token. Uh, so you're essentially logging on. Uh, obviously, that's not my password. And as a response, we give you a permission token, a, a pass, so to speak, so that in your future requests, such as to get your libraries, you can then specify that token as, as a bearer token. So you're saying, here's my pass information, uh, please give me the response. I'm currently set up as anonymous authentication at the moment, so we'll just ignore that. So if I hit send, what it's doing here is responding with the two libraries in my print portal. So if you look back here, we have two what we call root folders templates and librarian and my request so this is just a simple get request on on a url comes back with a json set of data listing out those two root folders templates and librarian each with their own unique id so that when we want to list the contents of each of those root folders, we simply append that ID that we got from the previous request to the follow-up request where we want to get the content of a root folder. If I send that, it gives me the response of the contents, so each of the bartender documents and their path in that root folder. Incidentally, you can specify your root folders in the admin setup. Here we have our root folders and you can add additional root folders if you wish, specifying a name and setting a location. You can have as many root folders pointing to whichever locations as you wish. 
getting printers, that's also important. So we can make another get request. So a simple URL, hit send, and it replies with two lists. The first list are the server installed printers. So these are the printers installed on my server and also a list of printers that are available for remote or shall we say internet printing. You'll notice at the moment I don't have any internet enabled printers but I can enable that very quickly. Uh, essentially what I need to do is well, let's choose a label quickly. Is I need to go to the page where I can configure my client service printing. So this is the Windows service that would be installed on the client machine, which enables the internet printing transport from the server down to the client, but also allows you to configure which printers are exposed for internet printing via the REST API. So if I enable printers A and B for that purpose, come back to my REST client, hit send, and now we can see those two printers are now listed using a, a, like a UNC path where it has the name of my computer, then followed by the full domain of my computer, and then followed by the name of the printer instance. So that when you make a print request, let's take a copy of one of these. When we make a, a print request, in print request, oh, looks like I already had it there, uh, in the print request, specify the root folder ID, the name of the document, name of the printer, number of copies I wish to print, if I hit send, we get a result. So that's printing over the internet. And it should be the case, because this is the server side, you can see print job was produced. And of course, we can set variable data there, so we can have a section for named data sources. We want to set uh, named data source values. Uh, so I could change the text here to be like, hello world, for example, just for fun. And success. I wasn't looking at the right one. Uh, so, hello world. There's that one there. And also, of course, because this is web services, as part of your request, you can pass in picture data encoded in base64 format. And in your bartender document design, you would want to design your document with a picture object that's using uh, Base64 encoding as the data source. Uh, if you choose PDF as the printer, the print job will be produced to PDF. Um, we can also link to a picture. So in your document design, the picture could be linked to uh, a path and named data source value, and you can pass it in as a named data source value. And if the variable data is set via uh, data entry form, hopefully that works. Yep. Yeah. In the first, with data entry form, uh, what you can do is essentially with a first request, you can essentially query that uh, document to find out what data entry form controls exist. So we can see input box one, two, three, and four exist. 
and it gives us the default values as they're currently set. Uh, so uh, this first request is failing because the document in question does have a data entry form and I need to set that data entry form with values. So now I know what those data entry form controls are. I can follow up the request by setting those values. And you'll notice I'm making a use of a request ID, which is matching the request ID from our previous request. So you make first request, we pick up the ID, we pick up the uh, data entry form controls, so that in our follow-up request, we can set those accordingly. Uh, so this oh, looks like I've done something wrong. Uh, so this would be used when you don't know or you don't have any prior knowledge of the variable data items in a data entry form of a given document. With named data sources, you do have to know what those named data sources are. At the moment, we can't query the document to find out what they are. Uh, we have to know them ahead of time. Incidentally, if I do choose PDF as, as the option, let me show you what that looks like. What we do is we generate a PDF on the server and we respond with this item file path that gives a URL link to where the PDF is located. So if I click on that link, bang, there we see our PDF of what was produced. So with the REST API of Print Portal, it's an already pre-built web API that you can put on a, a bartender server out there on the internet. Uh, it could be performing standard Windows printing if it's in an intranet environment, but also printing over the internet if it is indeed out on a, a publicly, semi-publicly accessible uh, server for printing from that internet server down to an on-premise printer in your factory or warehouses. So very handy, very useful, and as mentioned, it's certainly an area that we're looking to expand upon. So we see it as being of great value to our customers. Yeah. David, I assume you want to ask me some questions, yeah? Sure, I, I just realized that, that I have this integration or set of integrations here that I put together, uh, the purpose of which is I wanted to present the fact that I could build an integration that uh, these are web service integrations, uh, making functionality uh, easily accessible via a web request. Uh, I know integration platform isn't the, the subject of this webinar, but in these integrations, I have essentially PowerShell actions. Uh, so in the PowerShell, obviously a programmatic solution or implementation, I'm actually making use of the .NET API. Uh, so one of the things with the .NET API is obviously it's confined to the Windows platform. And if an application wants access to certain functionality uh, between computers over the network, perhaps between platforms, then obviously it can't directly make use of the .NET SDK. What you can do though is set up an integration on web services and have actions run in that integration that does make use of the API on that server side. So we're running stuff on the server side and then we're sending the, the results back on web, web service response. And of course, uh, many, in many cases, uh, 
the request going out is just saying, I want you to do stuff. And because bartender is is most often producing a print job or, or, or something else that happens on the server side, we do something on the server side and then we send the res results of that the action that happened on the server side back to the client to let them know how things went on. So anyway, in this example, I'm just using the, the print engine, uh, yeah, the print engine uh, API, in particular the printers class, to get a list of the printers and to convert that into JSON. Uh, likewise, getting a list of printers, although in this case I can use a PowerShell commandlet to get child items in a particular folder which has a .btw file extension returning in JSON. Here, get print jobs in a web service request. I'm using the system database API. If I open this editor here, I'm using the system database API, again using PowerShell, to define first some parameters. So I'm setting up a filter for my, so I first connect to the system database. I then set up a filter where I want to specify the start date, end date, print name, the print operator, the user. Uh, I, I commented out the job name as well. Because uh, I don't know what job names might be there, um, and from that I query the system database to ask return results for print jobs that were sent with these parameters. Uh, so it sets that up, adds the filters, and then runs it to read that information from the system database, returning the result as JSON data. And of course, that resulting data could be then used in populating a table or a report, or making a chart, whatever the case may be. Also, another one here, making use of the librarian uh, API. So, for example, to add a document to the librarian system. In actual fact, this is the test one I was putting together. I can delete that one. If I deploy this uh, integration, so let's quickly deploy it. What I'll do is then very quickly, if David allows me, to just very quickly test each of those integrations so you can see what that looks like. So I'm just going to deploy that to my server now. Just take a couple of seconds. Okay, so they're all deployed, waiting for my web service requests. And yes, no, where did I put it? Yes, here. <laughs> okay, so uh, I could get printers, for example. This gives me a list of printers, hopefully. Okay, so I've got a list of printers, all in JSON format. Uh, likewise, get documents. Uh, get print jobs. So in my request, as part of a get request with parameters, I'm specifying start date, end date, the name of the printer and then the print operator. Well, you can see I already did this earlier, uh, but it will then send me a response with all those print jobs that match though, those particular criteria. And lastly, I can add a file to my librarian, input document, oops, did I miss something? I think I missed something. 
Uh, ah. I would need to fix that. <laughs> Looks like I was playing with it recently. Managed folder, managed document. Okay. I guess I've run out of time. <laughs> uh, but I, I would need to fix that request so that it would add a document to my librarian system. And last comments, well, thank you very much for your attention. For those who have stuck around uh, to watch my webinar, uh, I hope it was useful and instructive. Uh, certainly, uh, the REST API is is very exciting to me and, and to us uh, going forward because it really does open up Bartender uh, for printing uh, to a much wider range of devices. Um, also, the print scheduler is certainly the, the choice I would make for uh, Windows-based implementations of automated printing for Bartender using the .NET APIs because it's so much simpler and straightforward for implementation and it's scalable, which is very nice. Excellent. Thank you, Ian. Thank you everybody for attending today's webinar and uh, see you all in two weeks' time to our next webinar. Thank you. Thanks bye -bye. very much, guys. Bye-bye.